And Addy Ads is in the house right now I because he's background. not. I know, right? He's got Julian Assange. The guy's out there covering the Ghislaine Maxwell trial, and he still has time to stop and cover Julian Assange. You're a mensch, my man. You're a mensch. And what should we call you, Addy? Addy works. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Jardula, and thank you, Miss Isabel. It's really an honor to be on the Convo Couch. I know you guys are boots on the ground as well all over Latin America covering the elections there. So it's really, really a, a pleasure and an honor to be uh, to be featured today. Well, thank you. I, I mean, we're, we're really loving the work you're doing. We've put up a bunch of your tweets before and covering this trial. You know, we started covering this trial back a while ago and uh, we kind of, uh, well, not the trial, but the whole the whole thing with Elaine and Epstein and all of that. And then, of course, you know, Epstein didn't kill himself. And, and now we're, we're here watching this this trial. And uh, my sentiment personally is that none of these people are really going to pay what the price that they should pay. Uh, it is being framed as only being like pasta says a few bad apples. But we want to hear from you. Uh, we're going to ask you a few questions, you know, to give the audience a perspective on how this whole thing has yeah. been. Yeah. The number one question I have for you, Addy, is because I've took a look at your tweets before. I took a look at your some of your work and stuff like that. And you're covering this beautifully like a journalist. You're giving yeah. us updates. This is what's going on. This person's testifying today and stuff. But your commentating side, the other side of Addy Ads that says, okay, what is this case really about? How is it being conducted? Is this, the way this case is being conducted, is it really going to give we the people the justice that we deserve? You know, at this point in time, I would say uh, no. Uh, I think by and large, most people will not be satisfied with uh, the outcome or even the way uh, this trial is going. Uh, when you take a look at the the prosecution, uh, you know, you can kind of ask a couple questions that are key questions. Do they want the truth out? And then do they actually want to win the case, which I do think are are mutually uh, exclusive. They're not they're not inclusive. Uh, certainly, I don't think they don't want the truth out. Uh, because they themselves, the defense was the one who uh, have redacted the names on the flight manifest, names we haven't seen yet, uh, which doesn't make any sense. Why would the defense care uh, care about that? Uh, and on the other hand, you got the prosecution. They themselves were the ones that brought up the, the big names we've already heard, uh, names like Kevin Spacey and, and Donald Trump and Bill Clinton, Chris Tucker, uh, etc. But do the prosecution want to win this case? Uh, I would say yes, but maybe not uh, as definitively as uh, we would hope. Uh, you know, when you look at uh, Comey being the one that uh, kind of redacted the names, uh, even Judge Nathan was like, why Why are you doing this? You know, you, you should be able to just redact the witness names and that's it and, and let the public see who else went to the island, which I do think the public has a right uh, to, to know that. So. Uh, that being said, you know, just four witnesses as well, which uh, has been confusing to some. Uh, and, you know, I was talking to Mr. Lee of Inner City Press several times, uh, and he has his own doubts with, you know, how secretive the, the government is being uh, with their prosecution. Uh, that combined with the fact that we thought this was going to go six weeks uh, into to mid-January even. But it looks like at this rate, we could be wrapped up by, by Christmas. So I might have a week a week at the end of the year here where, where the, the trial's done, and I'm just going to be... Uh, in New York. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit confusing from from that point of view. But also is is why hasn't Glenn Maxwell gotten any sex crimes? Uh, we got uh, at least one witness testifying. I'm sorry, two of them testifying to being uh, fondled uh, by Maxwell uh, on a massage table, uh, one of them being Annie Farmer. And uh, that's something, too. Uh, a lot of these witnesses were of age uh, uh, when these uh, uh, interactions occurred with Epstein uh, and Maxwell. Uh, and you see the judge, Judge Nathan, even going as far to say at the beginning of these testimonies that because no sex crimes were committed, that you shouldn't have that reflect on the characters of Epstein and Maxwell or the propensity to uh, commit crimes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's it's a bit confusing, I, I would say. And uh you know, wherever you guys want to take it, you know, I, I could talk about this for for a long time. I know we don't have uh, that much time, but yeah, any questions you guys have, uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer. I mean, just, you know, right off the bat, like whose testimony was the most surprising to you or at least the most compelling? Sure. Yeah. Great question. Uh, I would say the most uh, credible witness uh, in terms of competence, uh, intelligence and composure was definitely Annie Farmer, who was the witness I think most people were looking forward to. Uh, uh, to the greatest degree. Uh, but in terms of uh, an emotional effect on the jury and those uh, witnessing uh, this testimony, I would say Caroline was was the most uh, effective. A really rough upbringing. She you know, was molested by her grandfather beginning when she was four. 
traffic to Epstein from 14 years old to 18 years old and basically pimped out by her boyfriend uh, throughout that process. Uh, and he actually took the stand as well and, and appeared he pimped out multiple girls uh, to Epstein uh, and uh, and Maxwell. But it, uh, legally, it, it probably would be Witness Jane, who was our first witness. And that was a big uh, bingo that came through uh, this past week. And uh, I got to put a feather in my cap. There's a litigator who uh, I've been talking to as well. He's been showing up every single day, uh, mm -hmm. likewise. And uh, we were watching the, the second pilot, actually the chief pilot for the majority of the time that Epstein was in power. Uh, and he testified to never having met uh, Epstein's assistant until 2003. And the reason this was key is because the defense was doing, uh, I would say, a pretty good job. Uh, Christian Everdale, who uh, I would say is, uh, in, my, in my opinion, the most impressive uh, and the least impressive is also on the defense as far as attorneys go, Polly Yuka, who's been written about as, as a, a sort of monster, the way he's been cross-examining some of the witnesses, which uh, I wouldn't say is, is too much of a stretch, very harsh uh, cross-examination of Caroline. Uh, but the, the key point came because the defense was trying to purport that you couldn't prove that this Jane, uh, who has the same exact first name as Epstein's assistant, who, if anybody's up on this case, they know who that is. Uh, I don't want to say that name until the trial's over, but if, if you know, if you do your own digging, you can figure out who that is. Uh, so they were trying to say, well, this 1996 flight, uh, it was the 11th of November, 1996, just the first name was written on the manifest. And, you know, they're trying to say, oh, this was Epstein's assistant. You can't prove it was the uh, witness Jane. Uh, until the pilot said, well, actually, I didn't meet Epstein's assistant until seven years later. And immediately, uh, myself and uh, the litigator, his name is Joe, Joe Nearman. He's a uh, uh, good logic on YouTube. I actually just talked to him the other night. Uh, both of us were like, oh, my goodness. And, you know, I think most everybody else was like a little confused. But I was like that, you know, that was a huge bingo for the for the prosecution there. But going uh, going back to the, to the prosecution uh, that you know, another confusing thing they did was they didn't admit evidence that would have uh, certainly helped their cause. The evidence being the schoolgirl outfits that were sent to Caroline. And the reason they gave was they didn't want to have this cause further trauma or uh, they were trying to be sympathetic uh, to the witnesses, uh, which, you know, the, the judge was basically like, I, you know, I sympathize with this, but you know, you're kind of leaving the court hanging uh, and the jury hanging there too, with not, not admitting that that evidence uh, into court. Uh, so again, uh, another confusing uh, a move there uh, by the prosecution. Uh, so, so the audience understands there's four uh, victims, right, that are only going by first names. What are they? Can you explain to the audience so they know because they didn't use their first and last name. So I want the audience to understand what you're talking about when you say Caroline. Sure. So, so we got uh, Jane, who is the first witness, and then Kate, uh, and then Caroline who uh, just used her first name. That's her real first name, no last name. And then Annie Farmer uh, was the only one who used her, her real oh, name. Full name, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Mostly, uh, mostly pseudonymous uh, witnesses so far, uh, you know, with the exception of the Farmers. Uh, Annie's mother testified at the end of the day Friday, uh, yeah. basically just to corroborate uh, what Annie was saying about her upbringing. Nothing too explosive there from, uh, from the mother. Uh, but then at the end of the day, Friday, the prosecution uh, definitively rested their case. The defense asked for all charges to be dropped, which <laughs> Judge Nathan promptly uh, uh, to declined to do that. Uh, but then the defense, again, they plan to, to plan to rest or aim to rest by the 21st. So uh, if that's the case, depending on how long the jury deliberates, like I said, this could be wrapped up by Christmas Eve, possibly. Uh, yes. So, uh, again, very surprising development there. Uh, and no and, Virginia Roberts, correct? One of the most, uh, one of the most known victims, right there, the most famous victim. Has there been any reason given why she wasn't brought to testify? Uh, no reason officially. Uh, I've actually talked to Maria Farmer about this, uh, and she kind of points to Virginia Roberts as the most important witness in this whole saga, and one with the most damning testimony. Uh, and it's her contention, and many people's contention, that. Because her and Maria Farmer's uh, testimonies would be so damning, that is why they were disallowed uh, from testifying. And one more thing on Maria Farmer that I think is quite relevant is she tried to get a an unredacted FOIA from 1996 uh, admitted in federal court. Uh, the FBI disallowed this. Uh, and the only reason the FBI gave were uh, three letters, CIA. So 
uh, you know, lots <laughs> of uh, lots, lots of cloak and dagger stuff going yeah. on here from the government, to, to to say the least. You know, and going back to the evidence too, you know, we're seeing pictures of of Maxwell and Epstein being admitted, which the mainstream's lapping up. You know, they love seeing those pictures of Ghislaine or Cleavage hanging out and them hanging out at at the Queen's cabin. You know, it's really salacious, but where's the where's the videos, right? Uh, where, where's yeah. the, the evidence? Uh, well, it's probably in the evidence black hole at Quantico, uh, probably never to be seen again uh, in all likelihood, which is uh, which is quite unfortunate, you know, and, you know, discussing in the FBI and the CIA. That's a whole a whole nother show entirely. Has there been any mention of uh, Epstein Ranch and any of the, the houses where that he had? I mean, he had multiple homes when. New York and New Mexico, Paris like what? Yeah. yeah, has there been any mention of though? Because like that, that would be like you know common sense for me for them to talk about that. Yeah, you you bring up you know it's colloquially called the Zorro Ranch. Uh, mm. Interestingly enough, the FBI didn't think it was important enough to raid. The only one they raided, to my knowledge, was his apartment here in New York. Uh, it did come up in Annie's testimony and Annie Farmer's testimony. Uh, the uh, installation there that we now know to be the Zorro Ranch on that property wasn't there at the time she visited it was kind of a smaller residence that she stayed uh where and she stayed with uh, maxwell uh, and epstein so uh, new mexico did come up uh and and annie testified to you know epstein trying to cuddle with her uh in bed she got very uncomfortable ended up locking herself in the bathroom and uh left the Mex new mexico trip with kind of a bad taste in her mouth uh, didn't want to really associate herself with with those pair uh, again not you know not can't really blame her uh, blame her for that uh, but uh, really you know you know it's maxwell that's on trial here so and that's another thing too is the defense uh in, in general it's, it's just been very epstein heavy you know talking about epstein 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 but you know epstein is dead uh, for better or worse uh, i would say for worse in terms of uh, of justice uh, and that was one of the first things the the, the defense said is uh, I think it was on the first day or the second day was uh, my client is not Jeffrey Epstein basically was the message. So I'm not sure how much of a defense that is, you know, if like in trials to come, that's going to be like the first thing the the, the defense will say is, uh, uh, your honor, our client's name is not Jeffrey Epstein. I don't know how much that uh, holds weight in court or not. But yeah, the, the, the Zora Ranch, this uh, New Mexico property did come up several properties in New York including Mark Epstein, uh, who was uh, a proprietor of, of a property uh, that housed underage victims. And uh, as well, he's, he's tied to uh, MC2 modeling uh, with Jean-Luc Burnell, who was taken into custody late last year, actually, while I was covering election stuff in Atlanta. And that was at Charles de Gaulle Airport. Uh, other guys implicated, Peter Nygaard, also taken into custody uh, over the past year or so. Uh, yes. So, you know, a couple more trials uh, uh, that are, you know, very much related to this network that are uh, still yet to be uh, concluded. But I'm interested to see how the public's going to react. Well, number one, there's some new stuff going on in Atlanta, Georgia, when it comes to elections. We'll talk about that after. But let's stick to the case for one second, uh, because it seems like the prosecutors are trying to kind of push some of the blame on, like, the assistant, the limo driver, the pilot, whatnot, and try to get the distraction and get them away from, like, the big names of Bill Gates and Clinton and Trump and stuff like that. Is that tactic working at all when they try to kind of say, well, where, aren't you one of the recruiters, too, as well, when it came to the assistant? Yeah, it was actually the defense, and I think it was, again, Christian Everdale who was doing the cross-examination of Juan Alessi, who was, uh, he's being called the butler in the in the mainstream media, and even some independent reporters are calling him the butler, but the butler was actually Alfredo Rodriguez, who was the guy who had the black book, and he tried selling the black book to some lawyers. Those lawyers turned him into the FBI, and Selective as they are, the FBI uh, decided to go after Alfredo Rodriguez. Uh, he's actually dead now, uh, similar to Detective Joseph Riccari, who was the first uh, lead detective uh, in Florida. So, uh, you know, more than one mysterious death related to uh, to this Epstein saga. But uh, <laughs> Everdell came right out and asked the question. I believe the quote was, that doesn't make you guilty of sex trafficking, does it, sir? Uh, and that was objected to, and that objection was sustained uh, by uh, Judge Nathan, uh, probably unsurprisingly so. Uh, but not just him, the, the um, you know, even the boyfriend uh, driving uh, the girls to Epstein's uh, place. Uh, but I, I think that's why Maria Farmer's testimony would be so damning, because she uh, had heard Maxwell kind of, you know, turn into this demonic demeanor and 
talking about hunting for nubiles or, or young ladies who just had their, their menarche or their first period. Uh, and <laughs> that was part of uh, what went on. And, and, you know, because Juan Alessi was the driver, I think they were, you know, almost quite obviously uh, Everdale was trying to make it look like he, the driver, Juan Alessi, was the one doing uh, the recruiting. Uh, and, yeah. you know, that kind of moral gray area is, is a different conversation. But he was doing what he was told uh, by, by Maxwell and, and Epstein. And uh, Maxwell was the one who would say, OK, that's the girl I want to, you know, pull over the car. Pull the uh, car over. Go, yeah. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go talk to her. Uh, and that story was brought up uh, with Virginia Roberts. Yeah. Uh, so they went over that, how they, you know, it was actually at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, that that happened at so yeah that's definitely a tactic for sure that that's been used why do you think that um you know just looking at what's going on with julian assange then the, the Ghislaine maxwell trial and then the kyle rittenhouse trial what has been your observation as to both how the media and the public have responded yeah great question well, the Rittenhouse trial was a state trial where wherein cameras are allowed in court, uh, unlike federal court. But that being said, uh, there was a huge demand for a call in line, uh, which the judge denied. Uh, again, talking to Mr. Lee of Inner City Press, uh, when people kind of pegged us as the two leaders, which I, I found very flattering because that's his kitchen. That's all he does is cover SDNY trials. And he himself is a lawyer. I actually didn't know that. I, I found that out recently. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, I think for several reasons. The Rittenhouse trial is uh, based on an issue that is extremely divisive, uh, and that's uh, the right to to bear arms, the right to defend yourself, uh, going back to the BLM and, and Antifa angle, uh, and even the, the pseudo racial angle, which for some reason the media was trying to uh, to purport was part of it, even though all uh, all the participants in that, I, I believe, were all white males uh, in, in that Rittenhouse situation. Uh, and, you know, it, it's issues like that, that the media likes to focus on the mainstream mm -hmm. corporate media, not not media like us, because they're so d divisive. Whereas you look at a, an issue like the Assange saga, that is uh, an issue where you see many people on both sides of the aisle. I just saw Tulsi Gabbard came out on Twitter about two hours ago yeah. calling for Biden to to pardon him. Uh, you know, much less divisive because you have uh, journalism itself basically on trial uh, with, you know, Julian Assange being being the guy, being the chosen one locked up, uh, you know, by himself on the front line there in HMP Belmarsh. Uh, and that's something, too, I've been trying to, like you mentioned, uh, bring attention to, even though my hands are quite full here. Uh, I was reporting on the CIA involvement in the Assange case uh, over a year ago almost. And uh, fortunately, that came out in the in the uh, in the mainstream kind of uh, breaking through recently, so that that's been good. But uh, yeah, it was very scary. I was very sad to hear uh, that appeal get overturned. But they do have until the twenty third of this month, I believe it is. Assange's team does to to appeal that. So uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, as far as what they're trying to do, they're trying to to uh, torture him to death. They're trying to torture Julian Assange to death. They they don't really care about locking him up. They want him to stop breathing. Uh, whether that's, uh, you know, the CIA jabbing him with in the neck with something like Bob Maxwell uh, died uh, thanks to the Mossad or, or just uh, making him go insane. Uh, he just had a, a heart attack, a mini heart attack recently, and now he's on anti um, heart attack medicine. So, uh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, nothing to do with justice or, or due process. It, it's really just about trying to take Assange out and making life hell for him. I don't know what you're talking about with Bob Maxwell. He slipped on his boat, yacht, <laughs> somehow went over to the thing and landed in the water uh, on the Lady Ghislaine. But, uh, well, listen, this whole saga, I think, you know, a lot of us have said that this is all for show when it comes to the Ghislaine Maxwell trial slash Epstein trial, because we all understand this is what it's about, uh, that we'll never see Bill Gates, we'll never see Bill Clinton, Donald Trump. Uh, any of these people, Lex Wessner, we'll never see them take the stand. Bill Richardson, another one. Uh, we, you know, some of us think it's all for show. What are the people, we the people, going to get out of this trial when it concludes? Yeah, that that is uh, a great question. Difficult to answer, I would say. It does seem like the uh, them, the ominous them, deep state, shadow government, uh, this cabal, they are trying to... I think do a couple things at the best for us offer up Ghislaine's head on a platter uh, as kind of a, a token of, okay, we're sorry this happened. Hopefully you're happy with the, uh, this person kind of taking the fall. 
Uh, and that's the thing too, is they, they probably wanted to kill Ghislaine, but it, it would have just been too obvious, uh, you know, especially after Epstein's uh, non-suicide uh, in jail. So, you know, it, it's my contention that there's uh, multi, multiple government agencies across multiple nations who have an active interest in, in covering uh, this up. But, uh, you know, hopefully the just the justice comes uh, for Ghislaine and that uh, uh, appeases the public uh, insofar as she gets uh, charged with everything. But uh, unfortunately, I don't see that happening at this point. I, I could I also, however, don't see her getting completely acquitted. So uh, I would say uh, this is my take that the partial acquit uh, acquittals and the partial uh, convictions um, at this point in time. But, you know, Chris Hedges had a great quote uh, yeah. last Saturday. Uh, we had a, a an Epstein justice rally that was organized by Nick Bryant, author of the Franklin scandal. Uh, he's the one who broke that network. And he actually was the man with the black book. He had a, an anonymous source uh, give him the black book in 2012. He sat on it for three years before releasing it in 2015 to, to Gawker of all places, because nobody in the legacy media wanted to touch that piece of intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, and Chris Hedges said, uh, Glenn Maxwell is not the end. She is the beginning. And I really hope he's right because you have all these co-conspirators, Sarah Kellen, uh, Nadia Marchinkova, Claire Hazel. You got Eileen Guggenheim, who, who's been mentioned as well, who, who's part of this uh, this art school. Uh, not to mention, if you're going up the chain, you're talking about Les Wexner. You're talking about uh, Bill Gates, like you mentioned, Bill Richardson. So uh, whether they go up the chain or down it, I think we want to see both things uh, happen. So I really hope Chris Hedges is right and that this is just just the beginning. So the audience knows those names you mentioned first were people that helped recruiting with with uh, uh, dancers or models and all that whatnot that really have not been brought to justice as well. Just want to point that out. So, well, thank yes, you, sir. Addy, so much for coming on. Can you please tell people where to find you and follow you if you on Twitter if they're not familiar with you? Oh, thank you guys. I really appreciate uh, you both for, for having me on. It's been an honor. I've been really, really suppressed this year uh, on YouTube. I had my ninth channel terminated on Monday night slash Tuesday morning. I woke up, it was it was gone. Uh, and uh, yeah, Twitter, I'm on uh, at Twitter at one Addy Ads, one spelled out O-N-E-A-D-D-Y-A-D-D-S. And I know you guys are on Rockfin, which is great. I'm trying to send people to Rockfin now. Uh, so I'm, I'm also on Rockfin if people want to check that out. Awesome, I'm on man. I'm on Telegram. Yeah. Uh, likewise, that's t.me slash one Addy ads, one spelled out. And then my website, which I'm going to try to update again tonight because uh, I just got on the uh, the new one, uh, Buy Me a Coffee. It's kind of like Patreon. Uh, but I got the Cash App, Venmo, et cetera. Uh, the, but my website is addyads.one, so addyads.one. So, uh, yeah. again, thank you guys both. Uh, I really, really appreciate it, uh, both of you guys. Well, we, we appreciate, appreciate the you. work you're doing out there, man. That's awesome work. You're freezing your took us out there in the cold. <laughs> and when you want to have us on your show on Rockfin to talk elections, because we know you love elections, we're oh, here yes. for you, my man. Oh, yes. I would love that. I would love that. You know, maybe in January after this is wrapped up, I, I would love to do that. You know, I appreciate you guys. Really do. Because like I said, it's it was, you know, middle of this year. I was just so, I was getting really demoralized. And, you know, I, 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 I you know, I'm not a quitter, but those thoughts start to creep in, you know, it's like, you know, maybe I should try something else, but that's what they you know, want. That's what yes, they want. Yes, sir. Don't that's exactly <laughs> what they want. Um, but they wanted to make it impossible for us to, to have a living outside that the mainstream, uh, machine, mainstream propaganda machine. So, you know, places like Rockfin, buy me a coffee, et cetera. They, they make it a lot easier for us to, uh, to sustain ourselves. Thank you so much for coming on. Get yourself, if it wraps up early, get yourself a ticket to South Florida. It's a lot warmer <laughs> than it is in New York, my man. You're doing amazing work. Keep it up, and we'll keep our eyes on you, brother. We'll see you next time. Yes, sir. Thank you guys both. Bye, Addy. Addy ads, man. Doing phenomenal work. Out One of there. the few journalists, I think, out, out there, there reporting on the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. I mean, like, like we said before, you know, I was on Misty's uh, chat uh we need help we there's no possible way that all of us could cover things in the depth that is necessary and i mean we need somebody out there covering covering this trial well i agree with you that it is uh for show i i don't think we're going to see justice no. i'm a lot more pessimistic i don't think we're going to see any sort of justice on these people because they they are the justice i mean they they buy the justice system so you know, especially people like Bill Gates and Lex Wexner, you're not going to see, you're yeah, not going to see those yeah, people yeah. be touched. Uh, you know, uh, Prince Andrew, like these are nefarious, psychopathic individuals with a lot of power. Yeah. And uh, I just don't see the justice happening. But 
it does open the door for people to be like, wait a minute, Let's look I more. want justice yeah. now. Yeah. That's the important part. They look down the rabbit hole now. They look at it a little bit more nuanced. And the, one of the most important questions we asked, Addie adds, and, and it was about you know, Zora Ranch. What yeah. are we getting from Zora Ranch? There are people there who have testified that have been to Zora Ranch. Why aren't we grabbing people over there? Why haven't we seen what's going on? There was a lot of money, a lot of... I mean, the New York Times reported, mm -hmm. fam, that transhumanism was being practiced in Zora Ranch by Epstein with other women. That should be an area of concern, especially when it comes to Bill Gates, especially yeah. when it comes to DARPA, all everything else we talk about what's going on nowadays. And yet, it's being left off the map.